Morning, everyone. Great to see everyone on this beautiful Sunday morning. As always, do please take a copy of the bulletin home with you. Lots of good information in there. Just to highlight a few things in and out of the bulletin. Uh, not in the bulletin, but a calendar note. This Thursday, August 24th, the parish office will be closed. We are having our annual staff retreat that morning. So again, this Thursday, August 24th, the parish office will be closed. We ask you to please pray for our staff as we do our annual staff retreat. As I mentioned last weekend, this weekend we do have a second collection. It is for the church in Latin America. We ask you to please be as generous as possible. This Sunday is also Coffee and Donut Sunday. We invite you to stop down in the cafeteria after Mass today to enjoy some coffee and donuts and fellowship with your fellow parishioners while supporting our parish food pantry. Just a note to lectors, Eucharistic ministers, and altar servers, we are putting together the new schedule, but a heads up too, we will soon be having training, session for, training sessions for new lectors, Eucharistic ministers, and altar servers. If you have in your own prayer and in your own life felt called to one or more of those ministries, please consider attending those training sessions and signing up to help us in those ministries. Thank you. Please stand and join in our entrance antiphon found on page 195 in the Breaking Bread, page 195. Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done, in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for you to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please join me in reciting the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us so may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May all the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless you, and may the, all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is a reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. We received a letter here at the parish recently addressed to all of us, and I'd like to take the opportunity to read it for you. It reads as follows. Dear brothers and sisters of St. Boniface Parish, I am writing to ask for your help with a project. I have been actively involved for almost 2,000 years in spreading the gospel in the Eastern Mediterranean, overcoming many obstacles and facing suffering and death numerous times by the grace of God, I have established several faith communities in that area. I have argued constantly against imposing the law on non-Jews and in support of the freedom we have won in Christ. I'm never tired of proclaiming the gift of salvation for all through faith, nor the generous gifts given to every believer by the Spirit for the service of the entire community. Whether Jew or Gentile, I have shared my faith in Christ with all and have rejoiced in the gifts poured out through all for each other. But now I am called to carry the gospel to the West. I know that you've already received it, and for that I give thanks to God. But many in your area have not. What gifts await them in the faith? And what wonderful gifts does God have in store for all of us if we bring them to Christ? I ask for your help in this mission. We all have a part in the service of the gospel. I thank you for consi your consideration, and I look forward to working with you. Sincerely, Paul of Tarsus, Apostle to the Gentiles. Now I have a confession to make. Paul didn't write that letter. I did. But he did write the letter to the Romans which we've been hearing as our second reading over the past several Sundays. And while Paul didn't write the letter that I just read, the letter to the Romans says many of the same things. Paul's letter to the Romans serves as a letter of introduction to the Christian community in Rome. He had finished his work in the East and sought to continue his mission of proclaiming the gospel in the West. He wrote to the Romans to introduce himself to identify his mission, and to enlist their help. In the process, he addresses the most pressing issue of the early church, namely the relationship between Christianity and Judaism, between Christians of Jewish heritage and those of Gentile heritage. Whether Jew or Gentile, Paul concludes that all are saved through faith in Christ. And in our reading today, that all people have much to offer each other in the service of the gospel. Unfortunately, Paul did not live, at least not in this world, to see the fruits of his labors. He died a martyr in Rome almost 2,000 years ago. But his mission continues, even today. His mission is the mission of the church, and the church's mission is our mission. 
We, the people of St. Boniface, are both called and gifted with the exact same mission as St. Paul, to bring the gospel to all people and to bring all people to Christ. We are called to this mission by the spirit we have received in baptism and confirmation. Through the outpouring of the Spirit, God gives each of us unique gifts and responsibilities for the task of sowing the saving seeds of his love in the hearts and minds of all people. In the home, the workplace, the schools, in recreational and civic activities, in the life of our parish, we all have a place in the mission of the church. But sowing the seeds of the gospel is more than just a task. It is also a tremendous gift. As much as we give to others by sharing the gospel with them, we receive so much more. We receive new members to serve the mission with us, particularly through the rite of Christian initiation of adults, or the RCIA. We see in those who are in the RCIA a reminder of our own faith journey and of the fact that we all need conversion throughout our lives. Our faith is strengthened by their growth, and the community receives new life and hope in their enthusiasm. But most of all, we receive Christ himself in the life-changing power of grace which proclaiming the gospel brings. We don't cause conversion. We can't change anyone. We are simply called to sow the seeds. Christ does the rest. What an awesome experience to be a part of that, to be the tool, the connection to eternal salvation for others. What a tremendous gift. So where do you fit in? What is your part in the mission? Only through intense personal prayer and reflection can you discern this. Honestly and openly consider what gifts you have received in the Spirit. Decide what God is calling you to do and then do it. Act on the spirit and faith you have received. Share that spirit and faith with others. Continue Paul's mission of proclaiming the gospel and receive the gifts that come to those who give the gift of Christ. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial in the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for your salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism and the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer, that the church in every community may continue to be a house of prayer for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That many may hear and answer God's call to become priests, deacons, and religious brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
that we, we may do more to welcome, cherish, and protect the gift of life, which, like all God's gifts, is irrevocable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For blessings on our confirmation candidates, their parents, and sponsors, as they begin their preparation for the sacrament of confirmation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That those who are vacationing may draw closer to the Lord and find refreshment in body and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear our, prayer. our prayer. That the sick, the poor, and the lonely may find the consolation of God's presence and the love of his people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may be purified of sin and rejoice in the eternal life of heaven, especially Jim Lori, whom we remember at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gathering our prayers together, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the many blessings you give us. We thank you in a special way for the gift of faith. We ask you to help us answer your call to generously share that gift with others through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can I remind our second collection today is for the Church of Latin America. We ask you to please be as generous as possible.
to you, Lord God of all creation. With your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. He will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of peace. God. Behold the Lamb of God, the only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just one announcement I didn't mention. There will be some folks out there selling tickets to the Prep Villa kickoff event, so if you'd like to support that, they will be in the gathering space after Mass. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.